So virtual autism is something that I've, I've started to hear a little bit more, um, primarily on parent forums within online parent communities. Dr. Satlali Gonzalez is a clinical psychologist at Easter Seals DuPage. Part of her job is to evaluate children to see if they have autism or another developmental condition. I would say more often than not, parents will ask, is there something that I did that caused this? Something as simple as not watching their child's diet. I think a lot of times when parents have kids with delays, the anxiety is already heightened and the feeling of parental guilt, the worries, the anxieties are already there. Even though the pandemic is over, she says some parents are anxious that they did something wrong back then. And so a lot of parents tell me, we didn't have daycare, we didn't have anywhere to go, I was working from home, so I turned on the TV to entertain them. That could be causing a problem for their child now. Virtual autism is not a DSM diagnosis. It is not a real medical condition. When you have language delays, you get delays in other areas of development, like social development. So a child might present looking like a, high function, a child with high functioning autism spectrum disorder, but in reality, that's not what's going on. Dr. Louis Krauss is the head of Rush University Medical Center's Autism Assessment Program. It's really talking about language deficits that can develop uh, in early use of, of screen time with kids, in particular, uh, too much screen time. Uh, kids that are, are quite young, they're really, the only screen time that should be used might be in communication if a parent is away or something. Doctors say children who might develop this condition are usually three years old and younger, which can pose another problem. We know that probably at least 25% of kids that are diagnosed with autism, uh, you know, young kids diagnosed as autism, end up not having it as they grow up. It's uh, social anxiety disorders, speech and language disorders, uh, other, other struggles that they're having. I'm a parent too, I live in the real world. I'm not saying let's get rid of all the devices and the screens, but let's be, let's be smart consumers of media information. For Gonzalez, that means letting your child's screen time be on a TV instead of an iPad or a phone. When you're watching TV, you're still open to the world around you. When you're watching a tablet, your face is down here. You're not really open to what's happening around you. Which means less chance for building social and language skills. Anne Hoffman is a speech pathologist at Rush. So kids learn language by having responsive interactions with um, their caregivers. And so if they're spending a lot of time on a screen, they're not getting all of those responsive interactions. So it can lead to a communication delay, to a language delay. Um, but that's also something that we know how to treat. Starting with less screen time. Well, I think reducing is the right word. I think just going cold turkey is going to be very disruptive for the child. Maureen Karwowski is an occupational therapist and head of clinical services for Easter Seals DuPage. She says reducing and replacing screen time is key. If they're so used to being passive consumers, then they'll need support on, on how to play and they need you to get on the floor with them, a good game of hide and seek, a um, little obstacle course around the living room. While we hear a lot of concerns about too much screen time for kids, some of it does have a place in your child's development. What I think is really difficult is that it's easy for us to, to start to think about all or nothing. And child development is not about all or nothing. It's about trying to expose children to a well-rounded um, uh, environment that may include some screens. Which is why the American Academy of Pediatrics has developed this set of screen time guidelines for children as they grow. For those parents who might be looking for answers regarding child development delays on the internet, Gonzalez says the bottom line is this. And I always want to reassure parents it's nothing they did. Autism is not caused by anything that a parent did or did not do. If you think your child has a developmental delay, the experts we spoke with say the first step is to contact your pediatrician. Elizabeth Matthews, Fox 32, Chicago.